गुड इवनिंग स्टूडेंट्स माई नेम इज़ शशांक एंड वी आर डूइंग अ क्रैश कोर्स ऑन केमिस्ट्री फॉर द अपकमिंग जे एग्जाम एंड टुडे इज़ द टूएल्थ डे सो टुडे विल स्टार्ट आवर नेक्स्ट चैप्टर इन द प्रीवियस क्लास वी हैव कम्प्लीटेड द थर्मो डायमिक्स चैप्टर सो वी विल स्टार्ट द न्यू चैप्टर विच इज कॉल्ड एज सॉल्यूशन सो द चैप्टर नेम इज सॉल्यूशन सो इन दिस चैप्टर वी विल बी बेसिकली डीलिंग अबाउट द all the properties that happens in solution due to addition or removal of you can say solute whether whether it is you can say boiling point or melting point or anything the thing that goes cha under under undergoes change uh, during a uh, addition of solute we will study those things in this chapter so uh, for this chapter uh, some concept should be clear uh, like the one which is uh, molarity molality मोल फ्रैक्शन सो आई हैव कवर्ड द दोज पार्ट्स इन द फर्स्ट चैप्टर ओनली सो यू मस्ट कम्प्लीट दोज थिंग्स फर्स्ट बिफोर मूविंग टू दिस चैप्टर एज इट एज इट इज अ कंटेनिंग ऑल दोज कॉन्सेप्ट हियर सो लेट एस स्टार्ट दिस चैप्टर सो फर्स्ट ऑफ ऑल लेट एस स्टार्ट विद द सॉलिबिलिटी ऑफ अ गैस इन लिक्विड सो वी विल फर्स्ट ऑफ ऑल सी दट इज द सॉलिबिलिटी एंड हाउ इट इज इफेक्टेड बाई दिस प्रेशर एंड टेम्परेचर एंड ऑल ऑफ दिस फैक्टर्स so first we will see the solubility of gas in a solid in a liquid so uh, the first one is that the effect of temperature so we will consider two factors which are temperature and pressure for this for gas in a solid also and also for uh, then we will consider it for for the case of uh, uh, so li liquid solid in a gas on a, in a liquid okay so uh, the first one is the effect of temperature so this effect of temperature is simply following the leach alterator principle we know so those who are not aware about it so it it will be shown in the equilibrium chapter so this uh, this leach alterator principle says that that if you are doing a change in equilibrium so if there is a equilibrium that is existing and you are doing a change in that equilibrium then the reaction will proceed in such a manner so of course it will it is if it is disturbed then it will uh, react uh, to uh, you can say overcome that chain so it will proceed in that reaction so that it can minimize the effect of that chain so suppose if you have increased the pressure then the reaction will proceed in such direction which has the greater number of moles and you already know from the gas law that pv is equals to nrt so if the number of moles will increase that is if the number of moles will increase then also the pressure will increase it is obvious from this relation so in this way the leach atelier principles work similarly so if you have to see the effect of temperature so here we are uh, doing it for the solid first of all so what will happen for the temperature so if the dlh uh, solution is greater than 0 that is the reaction is endothermic and if uh, if 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 we are increasing the temperature so the reaction will increase in the forward direction or you can say for this case the solubility will increase so how is it so because you know that uh, for a endothermic reaction the dl h solution is positive that means we have to supply energy to proceed that reaction or you can say um, heat is consumed in that reaction so if we increase the temperature so to minimize this thing of temperature means the effect of temperature the solution will take up the extra heat that is provided for temperature now now uh, so the solubility of this uh, uh, solution is increased by increasing the temperature so i will show you how it is so wait a minute uh, there is some technical issue yeah okay now Uh, suppose we have increased the temperature now the we have uh, done it by of course we are doing it by supplying extra energy how, how it will be um, you can say how it will be uh, minimized so if the reaction will proceed in forward direction so it will take up energy so that extra energy will be taken and uh, the um, temperature will be come uh, come come down temperature will come down and the th thing goes similar for the vice versa case so if the temperature is decreased the reaction will proceed in uh, opposite direction so this is the case 
Now, if the if the reaction is exothermic, that means the uh, uh, temperature is released during the reaction. Then, uh, if we supply temperature to this, then the uh, solubility will of course uh, you can say decrease. So why it will decrease? Because it is already exothermic and we are applying more and more temperature to it, or you can say heat to it. So that uh, reaction will uh, do the uh, the reaction, or you can say the solubility. Sorry for this term. So you will we will use solubility here because we are considering the solubility. The solubility will decrease, of course. Similarly, if we increase the uh, decrease the temperature, then the reaction will or the solubility will increase. So as this more and more solid will be added, the heat will be released and the temperature will increase. Means the uh, you can say the patch up is done by this forward solubility. Now next is the effect of pressure. So pressure does not have any significant effect. Why? Because uh, uh, it is a uh, solid and solid has no that much effect on of pressure on it you know it very well so the next one is so this one is for gas solubility of gas in a liquid so what does this say so uh, for this one of the law is invented which is called as the henry's law Means the Henry uh, Henry's law is invented for this, so it says that if if we it is it it is seen that if we increase the pressure upon this, uh, you can say, um, on the solution, then the number of solid particles that is dissolved in this uh, uh, solution will increase automatically. So we can write it as in this way. So P i is equals to K x K h x i. So initially we can say that. Pressure that is uh, applied is directly proportional to this x i. Now, if it if we remove this proportionality sign, then this Henry's constant comes here. Now, what is this Henry's constant? So, this Henry's constant is specific. So, it is specific for different gases. So, for one gas it will be different. For another gas it will be of course different. Now, what is x i? So, x i is the mole fraction of the i th component. I notice p i. Pi is the partial pressure of the ith component. Okay, so this is the thing. So if uh, so, this is the effect of pressure uh, on solubility of uh, you can say gas in a liquid. So it is directly proportional to that. So more and more pressure will be increased. More and more you can say the solubility will increase. So how solubility will increase? Because we are increasing the mole fraction. And mole fraction means number of moles are increasing, so its solubility is increasing. Now this value of KH is different for different reaction. It is so. So if if a so solution has greater KH, so it will have less solubility. So it is very clear from this definition because KH is inversely proportional to this mole fraction, that is, the number of moles of solute. Now let us uh, move to Rolle's law. So what is Rolle's law? So this Rolle's law is common for both solubility of uh, solid in a liquid and gas in a liquid. So this was a common, you can say, uh, law for, for both of this. So it simply says that the partial vapor pressure of each volatile component, that is Pi, is the is directly proportional to its mole fraction, that is Xi. So it says that. Uh, more number of solid particles you add to a solution and the solute particle should be volatile then the partial pressure of that uh, solution will automatically increase and if we remove that uh, proportionality constant we will get as p01 where p01 is the uh, p01 is the uh, called the uh, pressure due to pure substance so this uh, pi is a when it is in the solution so must be aware about this difference. So Pi is the partial pressure in solution. In solution. And P01, we can say P0i is of pure substance. Means the same so solid we are talking about, but it is not in the solution but as free. You can say it is not mixed with something else. So pure solute is better word for this so pure solid sorry for here so it is pi naught that is 
प्रेशर ऑफ सीओ आई एस सॉल्यूट ओके नाउ मोर इंटरेस्टिंग थिंग हियर इट इज रिटर्न दैट रॉल्ड लॉ इज नथिंग बट अ स्पेशल केस ऑफ हेनरी लॉ वेर के एच इज इक्वल टू पी टोटल ओके सो दिस स्टेटमेंट इज वेरी क्लियर सो इट सेज दैट इफ यू कंपेयर बोथ दिस इक्वेशन सो इफ यू आर टेकिंग दिस से यू आर टेकिंग पी आई इज इक्वल्स टू के एच एक्स आई ओके एंड पी आई इज इक्वल्स टू पी नॉट एक्स आई So for the whole solution, it will be p total. This will be p total. Now, uh, one more thing here. So two things are there said here. So we have a p total and a p not. So this p total is for the gaseous case. So this is for gases. Okay. So do not get confused. so p p total is for the gases so suppose if it is given that pi is equals to p total so this is the equation given in the ncert where y is the mole fraction pi is the uh, partial pressure and p total is the total pressure whereas this is for a liquid in a liquid This is for gas in a gas, so gas in a gas, and this is for all those solution which are prepared in liquid. So do not get confused between these two formulas. So uh, if you take gas in a gas, then then you know that there is no uh, much interaction between the gaseous particles. so this p not let me explain it here so if we have gas then we have liquid so this is gas gas and this is uh, any state or solid liquid or gas in a liquid now when we are taking a gas gas solution the thing is that we are writing this rolf law like this so it is pi is equals to pi xi is p not okay now since this pi is the pressure when it is in the po form or you can say when it is not interacting with the solvent particle yeah it is correct so this is the thing for p not i but if you consider the gas particles they are far apart from each other so since they are far apart from each other this p not i automatically becomes p1 okay and this equation we will get as p total y i whereas for the uh, anything that is dissolved in liquid you can write it as p not i where p not i is the partial pressure in the pure form xi so these are the two formulas of for the rolf law so do not get confused between them now if we take this rolf's law so it is just a special case of this henry's law for if we take this equation and compare it with the henry one so you can see here that is nothing but the special case where kh is equals to p total okay now next consider a liquid liquid solution so what do we know at liquid liquid solution so p total is equals to p1 plus p2 so it is according to dalton's law so dalton's law said that uh, says that for a given solution or for a given mixture you can say that the total pressure is nothing but the sum of the individual one so it is the simple dalton's law so suppose we have two components in a solution which are p1 and p2 if you have to calculate the p total it will be nothing but the partial pressure of p1 due to p1 and partial pressure due to p2 now next we know that from the rolf's law that for liquid liquid solution that x1 p1 not is equal uh, is equals to p1 and p2 x2 not is equals to p2 
Now since this is a binary solution, so I have said it earlier also for a binary solution x1 is equals to x2, x1 plus x2 is equals to 1. So what will be x1? So it will be 1 minus x2. So I have put this equation here, which is simply here. Now if we take this x2 common, we will need both, both of this, so p01 will be out and we will get as p02 minus p01 into x2. So this will be final equation. You can use this one also or this one also. So if you have this x1 and x2 both then you can use this formula and find it easily the p total but if you have only given x1 or only given x2 then you can use this equation so you can use the vice versa also so if you replace not this x1 but this x2 so it will be 1 minus x1 so this will be x1 and this will also be changed so it will be 1 minus x1 which will be p02 and p01 minus p02 into x1 now here is a very important graph that is plotted here what does this graph is showing so we are showing showing here the partial pressure or the wafer pressure wafer pressure you can say more accurately versus the mole fraction so here's the thing so if we are increasing so we, here is the mole fraction x1 and x2 so if you are uh, dissolving x1 into x2 so we are dissolving x1 into x2 so initially the mole fraction will be 1 because the total number of moles and the number of moles of x1 will be 1. So the number for the mole fraction x1 will be 1. And since x2 is uh, this 2 is present in 0 amount so it will be 0. Now as we increase the number of moles of x1 so we are increasing this total pressure. Okay. So what information does this graph give? First of all it says that x1 is more volatile how can we conclude this point so it is very clear and very simple so it is saying that according to this graph we are seeing that the x we increase the number of x1 so yet as we decrease the number of x x1 so this thing will be x2 so x2 is more volatile so as we are increasing the number of moles of uh, this two particle the total pressure is increasing so how, how is it increasing? This means that the two particle is more volatile. So it is more volatile, so 2, I am writing it 2 here. 2 is more volatile because it is, since it is more volatile, it will form gaseous uh, vapor more easily and will apply more pressure. So in this way, the P total is increasing due to increasing number of two particle. Number two particle, more clearly. And on the opposite sense, if we are going, <clears throat> that is from x2 to x1 so we are uh, slowly decreasing this second particle and we are getting the first particle whole so we are seeing that we are getting a total pressure on decreasing fashion so it is not only this uh, uh, not only this we can say plot of p01 versus x2 which is sim uh, simply this equation so we are using this equation which says that P total is equals to P naught one P P two naught minus P one naught one plus X two. So it is using the Y is equals to M X plus C. Okay. <clears throat> now let us move to other other thing that is solid liquid solution. What is the solid liquid solution? So we are dissolving a solid into liquid. Now we are seeing that uh, we have a graph here of a vapor pressure versus X solvent. So we are increasing the mole fraction of solvent and we are simply seeing that the pure solvent, uh, the vapor pressure of this pure solvent is increasing. So it is, sorry, the, uh, the vapor pressure of this solution is increasing. And when we get, uh, when, when the mole fraction is equals to 1 for X solvent, then the point where it has touched or you can say the point where it, it is interplotted 
this vapor pressure axis is called as the vapor pressure of the pure solvent. So it is it's very obvious from this equation because as the mole fraction will be 1, so there will be only solvent present and the vapor pressure will be the only pure solvent. Now why is this vapor pressure increasing as we are increasing this, uh, as we are decreasing this solid, solid particles in this? So this phenomena is quite simple here. So suppose we have this jar that is tumbled upon this and it is measuring the pressure applied on this. Something is connected which is measuring the pressure applied on this jar. So for pure solvent, this particles which are present at the brink of this solution will get vaporized and be here. Now this gaseous particle will apply pressure on in, in every direction and we will measure the uh, pressure that is applied by the pure solvent. Now suppose we are introducing the solid particle on it. Uh, in the general sense, we already know that solid particles are of course and of course very much less volatile as compared to the liquid one. So since it is less volatile, it will cover up this brink here. So this brim here you can say and will not allow the particles to escape from this here, to escape from here, here or here or wherever it is replaced it. So num number of particles of gases that is escaped will be decreased and less pressure will be applied on this walls due to which the vapor pressure of this solid liquid solution will decrease as we are increasing the number of solid particles or mole fraction of the solid. So this is solid liquid solution. Now let us move to ideal and non-ideal solution. So we have seen that all the equations are given a linear graph. So we will see it later that this is not true because this is an ideal case. So we will see what is the non-ideal case before that. Let us compare this ideal and non-ideal solution. So the in non-ideal solution, the intermolecular forces are significant. Why is it so? So if this will be significant, so you already know, so it, uh, whenever we consider this ideal solution, in general you can say for any law or any uh, description, we do not want to bring in this intermolecular force because it interrupt the ideal case and it's, uh, it is it stop the particle from escaping in the normal fashion. So if suppose if someone is applying pressure of 5, uh, five uh, you can uh, Newton and removing a particle from some, somewhere and putting it somewhere. Now we are put, uh, apply, uh, dissolving something or you can say attaching something to that uh, very particle and we are decreasing or increasing uh, the escape tendency of that particle. So it will uh, of course abrupt that uh, thing and make it uh, less ideal. So for ideal solution this intermolecular force are negligible. Now it follows Rolle's law very easily we get the linear graph for this ideal solution whereas for non-ideal solution we see a deviation from this Lord's law. Next is enthalpy of mixing which is also called del mix H. So this change is zero. So it is nothing but the heat at constant pressure. Heat release as constant pressure. So if we keep, keep the temperature constant and we are dissolving a solid into solvent and we do not see any heat exchange between this environment and the surrounding surrounding and the system. So for that case uh, we can say that del H mix is equal to zero and hence it is a ideal solution. Whereas for non-ideal solution it is non-zero and why is it so? So we already know that for ideal solution we do not have any intermolecular attraction. So we do not have to apply the heat that is more heat to evaporate that particle and it will be zero. Now next the inotropy of mixing. So the inotropy of mixing for ideal solution can is positive. Okay. So it is positive while for non-ideal solution it is negative. That means del S mix is 0 for, for positive for ideal solution. Now next is volume change. So if you are dissolving two things solid and solvent. So do not, we do not get any volume that is different from the earlier one. So the total volume, uh, you can say the total volume change will be zero. Next, the colligative property behaves ideally. So the, all the colligative properties, so we will see that we will find many formula for this colligative property. And we will see that it is only followed by this uh, ideal particles or you can say ideal solution. Next is solubility. 
so it is uh, following this Rolle's law so of course it will form follow Henry law whereas it is deviating from the Henry law you can you are not getting a linear plot for this now for non adjust solution we have two cases the first case is that we have a negative deviation so what is negative deviation so so this is an example of negative deviation you can see here that the pressure that should be actually felt by this p total we should actually get is deviated and we are get not getting a linear graph in place of that we are getting a less amount of total pressure so why is it so so it happens when ev interaction is weaker than this a interaction okay so this ab interaction is weaker than the a interaction sorry should be stronger here and it should be weaker sorry for the mistake now since ab interaction is stronger so how it is affecting so suppose initially for the ideal case right a interaction is equals to ab interaction so as much pressure a is applying so ab is we have to you can say so after the formation of this very so called you can say solution this in, uh, amount of this interaction between this particle remains same and the particle are taking the same amount of energy to escape from this solution now suppose we have a stronger interaction between this ab as compared to a now since the interaction is stronger this b or this you can say overall this ab will uh, take more energy to escape from this solution bring and as a result of it it will apply less, less pressure and the p total will decrease so this is the simple explanation for this negative deviation okay and the example is ethanol water so this is the example for this so it is ethanol water this is sorry this is right okay yeah this is nitric acid and water hno3 and water so why is it so if you take this case so it is very simple so we are dissolving a polar solvent into polar solvent so we are getting almost equal interaction so we are getting almost greater interaction than hno3 hno then water water than hno3 hno3 so we can say that water water interaction is less stronger than hno3 and water interaction so next is positive deviation so what is positive deviation so in positive deviation ab interaction is weaker now since ab interaction is weaker ab will be escaping easily from the solution and will get more vapor pressure so we will say this amount of deviation from this uh, ideal case and this uh, very obvious example is ethanol water so generally polar and non polar solution if you are taking mixing polar and non polar with each, with each other so which can, whichever can be the you can say the solute or solvent so if you are dissolving polar into non polar then we will get positive deviation and uh, in general for polar polar we will get a negative deviation okay or more clearly you can say that if you are dissolving a more uh, non polar thing in a less polar thing then we will get a strong interaction now let us move to colligative property so all this interaction and all these things are very uh, you can say condensed and uh, we take a very simple uh, approach for this de 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 deviation from this uh, property like boiling point or vapor pressure and all of this and we say that okay we will not consider the interaction thing and we will not go into deeper into this uh, repulsion or attraction we will simply say that uh, whenever we uh, calculate this colligative property which are pressure boiling point freezing point and osmotic pressure we will simply calculate or we will simply determine the number of solid particles that were dissolving in and that and only that matter for our rest of this discussion so let us move to the first uh, topic which is relative lowering of vapor pressure 
so what do you mean by relative so relative is nothing but you can say in the short term you can say that initially it was p not one that is the pure solvent and uh, of course up, upon addition we have gone some change that is p not one minus p one and relative to that one so relative to this initial one we can say that it is uh, equals to this mole fraction so it says that or you can also say that change in vapor pressure is directly proportional to mole fraction mole fraction okay now since we can remove this proportionality constant and we can get this formula as well now uh, if you are taking a solvent and a solute so generally we see that the solvent particles are present in bulk as compared to the solid particles which are present in small amount now since this you can say this n2 is present in a small amount so overall n1 will be much more greater than n2 now since n1 is much more greater than n2 so which is same thing written here we can replace n1 plus n2 with approximately with n1 now uh, we know that the mole fraction formula is this n2 is so number of moles of n2 is so we have removed this mole fraction well simply n2 by n1 so no mole uh, so number of moles of n2 is weight of 2 divided by molar mass of 2 whereas for mole fraction of uh, sorry number of moles of n1 we can write w1 by m1 which is weight of 1 by the molar weight so we will see this application later on in the, in the questions next is elevation of boiling point so what is elevation in boiling point so if you see the graph here that is plotted here you will see that this is the vapor pressure of solvent as we are increasing the temperature now suppose uh, we again put some solute in this solvent and we got a solution and then we measure the vapor pressure then you can clearly see that there is a difference between these two which is mentioned as delta tv and it remains constant throughout the temperature change so this gap is always maintained between these two now this deviation that we are seeing here in the temperature so the change in that temperature is directly proportional to or you can say the temperature change in the boiling point of course because how will relate this boiling point and this vapor pressure sorry boiling point so how will relate this vapor pressure and this boiling point now we know that uh, for a solution to or a, we can say a substance to start boiling the vapor pressure of the solute of this uh, liquid solution and the vapor pressure of the environment should be same now since we are dissolving solid particles in it we are somehow decreasing their solubility okay so we are decreasing the solubility of this or you can say the volatility vol volatile uh, volatility of this uh, overall solution now since it, it is less volatile it will uh, apply less pressure on the environment so it will take uh, more uh, you can say temperature to reach that point where the vapor pressure of the solution is equal to the vapor pressure of the environment or the uh, atmosphere due to this reason there is a increase in the temperature of the boiling point so and this change you can that we observe here is nothing but directly proportional to the molality or if you remove this proportionality constant then we'll get it as kb where kb is the ebulloscopic constant so this kb is different for this specific thing and it is different for different solute yeah and if we put this m formula here that is molality that is we know that number of moles per kg of solvent so number of moles of 2 so it will be weight of 2 by molar mass of 2 by per kg of solvent that is w1 so suppose it is given in uh, uh, say it is given gram and it will convert it to kg so we are dividing by 1000 so we get this whole formula to calculate this elevation of boiling point now this graph is very important if you do not get this graph you can ask me so if you uh, drop this point at 1 atm so you will get so we always calculate this standard boiling point of any given specific thing at 1 atm 
So at one ATM, suppose we drop this or interpolate this graph and we got this for the solvent T naught V. And similarly, we plot this and we got it as TV. So del TV is nothing but TV minus TV minus T naught V. Okay, student. Now next, we will move to this depression in freezing point. So what is depression in freezing point? So let me make it clear. So here's the thing that the vapor pressure of this solution, the vapor pressure of this solution is of course lower than the vapor pressure of this liquid solvent. And why is it so? We have already explained it. So due to this reason, uh, this will, uh, this solution, this solution thing will, uh, you can say that it, suppose this is the 1 ATM pressure. Now, if we take the solution, then this vapor pressure will decrease, of course. And due to this reason, it will not be that much uh, easier let me write it here clearly so it is not visible here it is tf it is t not f and delta tf will be t not f by t tf now due to addition of the solid particles uh, which is having a uh, lower vapor pressure it, it become difficult for the solution to freeze or you can say from converting it to liquid to solid as compared to the solid uh, solvent thing and we get a deviation from this uh, absolute freezing point of this solution as compared to the solvent and it is having the same formula which is given by delta tf is equals to kfm and kf is the molar depression constant or cryoscopic constant so this thing, ebulloscopic constant and cryoscopic constant, so the children often get confused with it. So do not get confused. Remember the thing that uh, ebulloscopic is related to boiling. And if you want, you can get a trick that ebulloscopic is having the word B in it. So of course, it will for boiling. And cryoscopic is not having any word for B for it. So it waits for freezing. Now similarly, we get the formula Kfm, where M is the molality. We put this. Uh, formula for molarity of number of moles of uh, solid wind per kg of solvent then we get this delta tf okay now this delta tf uh, sorry this kf ebulloscopic constant uh, cryoscopic constant and this kb ebulloscopic constant have a more form a more general formula for calculating this so it is nothing but r which is the gas constant m1 which is the mole fraction of 1 uh, sorry mo molarity of 1 into tf square that is the temperature by which original bar boils tf square 1000 into del h fusion so del h fusion is enthalpy change so you must have heard this term in the uh, thermochemistry so enthalpy change during fusion or you can say solid to liquid okay so you can use this formula also to find the kf similarly for kb we have this for vaporization vaporization is nothing but liquid to gas enthalpy change so you can find, use this formula also and find your answer. So Kf and Kb for different material given here for water, ethanol, cyclo, xn. So weight is specific for specific solute. So it is different for different solutes. Okay. Now let us move to next colligative property which is osmosis or osmotic pressure. So what is this osmosis or osmotic pressure? So you can see a setup that is put here. So this compartment is having the solution thing <coughs> and this compartment is having the solvent thing. Now uh, this pi is called as the osmotic pressure. 
Okay. Oh, okay. So let us get this osmosis thing quick. So we have not much time left with our, in our hand. So it is nothing but the movement of solvent particle. So it is the movement of solvent particle of lower concentration to higher concentration. Uh, since this is containing solution, we are which, which is containing more than a solvent. So this thing happens to apply apply more pressure on this semi permeable membrane. And and uh, already we have a atomic pressure or oh, sorry atomic pressure I'm saying atmospheric pressure that is applied due to the environment. Now due to this extra pi that is uh, due to addition of the solute, we get a more pressure in this compartment. And uh, as compared to this one, which has a zero concentration of the solute. Now to maintain this, now to maintain this thing, the solvent particle moves from a lower concentration area. So this is a lower concentration area. So it is a gradient flow. Uh, this is a gradient flow. Gradient flow. So to keep this concentration less, uh, the solvent particle moves from an area of lower concentration to an area of higher concentration. Sorry, to keep this pressure, to keep this pressure good thing good, the solvent particle moves from an area of lower concentration to a higher concentration. Okay. So this is the lower concentration, and it moves in this direction. Yes. So this is the thing here. So we will see how it is uh, used for solving on numericals. The next one is osmotic pressure. So this osmotic pressure is nothing but, so we'll see the formula later on. It is the pressure that is applied on the valve due to addition of solute. And if you apply the same amount of this osmotic pressure, then there will be no net flow of this thing. Okay. Okay. So this is the thing here. So this solution, this whole this setup is static. Why? Because we are applying the same amount of pressure that is pi on this, so that the pressure difference remains same, and we do not see any uh, transfer from solvent to solute. Now this osmotic pressure is calculated by using the formula pi is equals to C R T, where C is the molarity. So if you remove this molarity thing by number of moles per unit of solvent. So it will be N2 by per unit of solution. So it will be N2 by V. Now next we know that N2 that is number of moles of 2 is nothing but weight of the uh, weight of the solute divided by molar mass of solute. Now we also know that this M2 is equals to W2 by. So we are re rearranging the equation and getting our final uh, molar mass. So throughout this for calculation of this colligative property, our main focus is to calculate the molar mass of this thing. And you will see how it is important. So we will see in the last slide, we will study about this abnormal molar mass. Then we will see that why is this calculation of molar mass important. Now we have some points related to osmosis here. The first one is two solution having the same osmotic pressure are called isotonic. So if two solution are having same osmotic pressure, then it will call isotonic pressure. So if you keep those two liquids in two compartments and put a semi-permeable, uh, semi-permeable, uh, membrane between them, then there will be no net flow of solution from either side because we have the same osmotic pressure. Now, hypertonic and hypotonic. So, hypertonic is said that, uh, so it is cell, uh, see, see in the red blood cell. So, when the osmotic pressure is more, the fluid goes out of this blood cell and we see a hypertonic case. And for hypotonic, the out, out, outer this outer pressure is more so this outer uh, liquid that is present here having more concentration will flow inside the cell and we will see a hypotonic phenomena next is reverse osmosis so what is this reverse osmosis so of course we are applying pressure on this uh, we have seen that for ma uh, maintaining a static for maintaining a static uh, between this flow we have uh, applied a pi amount of pressure that is plus the ATM pressure to keep this thing good. Now, if that pi is increased such that it is greater than the osmotic pressure, then the solvent particle from move from here to here. 
this is the very important uh, uh, you can say a very important method to uh, make a solution free of impurities now we are applying the pressure which is greater than this pi so so uh, yes this of course this fresh water is applying pressure that is pi so now we are applying a greater pressure than pi which will result in movement of salt water uh, salt water solution solvent particles from this side to this side and in this way you can purify this water that is salt water and we can outlet we have an outlet here which will get the fresh water so we are using a piston here to apply the pressure so for the students who are not aware that how is this pressure applying upon here is, is seeing an effect upon here so for that uh, some of you studied fluid mechanics and you have seen there that you applied a pressure here upon this any surface of, of, of liquid and the same amount of pressure is applied in every direction of this container whether it's this whether it's this okay and this thing is very useful for uh, doing many mechanical work easily okay so this is the thing here now we will move to abnormal mass so what is abnormal mass so abnormal mass may mainly arise due to the dissociation and association and why is it so so we have seen that all the this colligative property depend upon the number of moles now if there is a case of association or dissociation the number of moles is of course of course decrease or the number of particles is of course decrease because it it is simply a uh, direct relation between them because the two will associate and we will get a one particle so initially there are two particles now there are one particle similarly if there is dissociation number of particle will increase and we will also see a change in the uh, molar mass that we, that we are calculating and the molar mass that we are getting now to explain this phenomena Ventoff uh, introduced a factor that is called i and also known as Ventoff factor to uh, you can say glorify this phenomena so i said that if we know i and if we know this a normal mass that we have calculated using this solution thing then we can calculate this molar mass and vice versa we can calculate the i also similarly i is equals to observe colligative property by calculated calculated colligative property because we know that colligative property is directly proportional to this number of moles of solute which is directly proportional to this uh, molar mass of this thing and so this this AIF you can give this formula also next number of particle before, before dissociation and number of particle after dissociation so suppose two particles are dissolved in a solvent and after it sol uh, after that uh, dissolve uh, dissolution we get one particle where two particle one and particle two associates we can say it uh, does association to form a single entity and we know that colligative property is directly proportional to number of moles so this will result in a change in the abnormal mass and we can calculate this thing by using this formula now in some case of dissociation and association we do not have a hundred percent association and dissociation so for that case we have introduced this formula where alpha is a degree of dissociation and if you have to calculate i we can calculate it using this simple formula which is i is equals to 1 plus n minus 1 alpha where alpha is the degree of dissociation association i is the event of factor and n is the number of moles associating so suppose there is example of ch3 c dot oh so oh then we have o then we have h we have o then we have c then we have O and then we have C, then we have CH3. So if you see here, you can see it very clearly that these two particles are dimerizing with each other. They are forming dimers. So for this case, we will use this degree of dissociation, and for this case, n will be two. So since two are dim, uh, we can say combining, we can say n is equals to two. Similarly, what is the relation between the degree of dissociation? It is nothing but I is equals to one plus one by n minus one beta. So these two formulas are important. Now next move, we'll move to this question. So before we move to the questions of colligative property, let us do a question that is related to this uh, solution thing, or you can say first chapter thing, which is calculation of solubility or molarity or molality. 
so what does this question say the mole fraction of urea in a uh, aqueous so area so urea solution is 900 gram that is containing 900 grams of water is 0.05 so we are having a mole fraction of 0.05 that means we are having so let us solve this so mole fraction of the urea is 0.05 that means 0.05 moles of urea dissolved in per uh, per uh, uh, unit of this solution now we are also given here if you see that we are dissolving 900 gram of water let us calculate it by using form, by using another method so you can uh, refer to that uh, that method also or you can refer to another method also so suppose the mole fraction is 0.05 that means 0.05 mole is dissolved in 1 kg of solution okay now we are it is written here that we are taking 900 gram of solution yeah we are taking 900 gram of solution so out of this 1 kg 900 gram is uh, 900 gram is water so 100 gram is the uh, this urea okay so 900 gram of water so if the density of the solution is also given so the density of the solution is also given which is 1.2 gram per centimeter cube okay so so 1 kg of this solution is this so if we multiply this 1 kg into 1.2 1 kg into 1.2 so we will convert this into kg that is into 10 to the power minus 3 so we will get this mass of water mass of solution mass of solution or you can say so this is the volume sorry 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 volume of solution volume of solution now we'll get this mass of solution so since you have the mass of solution we will subtract this 900 from it mass of solution and then we will get our uh, mass of this water that is present now what do to calculate we have to calculate the molarity okay sorry 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 so i've done this question wrong so it is not given uh, molar molarity it is given mole fraction so sorry so we are given this mole fraction so if we consider a total number of moles as one so total number of mole is one here so in one mole of solution so in one mole of solution uh, this is the formula so there is 0 0.05 mole so moles of urea divided by moles of urea plus 900 by 18 so from 900 by 18 we get the number of moles of water and this is the total number of moles now if we find out the moles of urea here we solve this equation we will get at 2.63 now what is the mass of urea that is present it is 158 gram then what is the mass of the solution that is 158 plus 900 that is 1058 gram and the density we know is uh, 1.2 so if we multiply it we will get this volume here so we get the volume we get that uh, number of moles of urea now we will divide it and get our answer okay now next we have a second question here that 25 milliliter of a solution of barium hydroxide on titration with a 0 0.1 mole of molarity of solution of HCl give a tight tighter value of the 35 mole so we have to calculate the molarity so I am not doing this question here why because it is simple so it is for a, a for your um, you can say for a practice so you get sharpen your molarity molality and mole fraction and all now 
now i'll move to next question so it says that for a solution from formed by mixing liquid l and m the vapor pressure of the l plotted against small fraction is given here here xl and xm are the represent the mole fraction of this uh, l and m the correct statement is so there can be more than one correct statement because s is written here so you can see clearly here that it is a positive deviation so it's what uh, what is the statement so the point z represent the vapor pressure of pure liquid m yes it is as it's true no uh, xm here so we are for forming a liquid which is having l and m the vapor pressure of l plotted again m l plotted again again the mole fraction of m so the mole fraction of m is decreasing in decreasing here the point j represent the pure so it does not represent because the mole fraction of this thing is zero here so we have a zero mole fraction of m so it will represent the uh, the partial pressure of the pure substance of l and not m okay now next the point j represent sorry the point j represent the vapor pressure of the vapor pressure of liquid l and the rolled flow is obtained up is obtained when xl is equals to 1 so when xl is equals to 1 so it is the point here you can see very clearly that at this reason at this reason there is no deviation so here xm is zero but xl is maximum and we can we not see any deviation so it is very obvious answer so it is the correct one now next the point z represent the vapor pressure of pure liquid m pure liquid m no it is wrong again and the rolls law is obtained at xl equals to 0 so this obviously not representing it okay attractive intermolecular force between ll in, in pure liquid and mm in pure liquid m are stronger yes it is stronger we have seen for the positive deviation that the a a interaction a a interaction should be so the a interaction and the mm interaction so we have two interactions so we will take it l l and mm so since it is a positive deviation so mm interaction will be stronger than the lm okay so we will get a positive deviation now same thing is written here so you can uh, see the slides by yourself so i'm putting this for a pause we can take a screenshot if you want okay now next mixture showing positive deviation from rolls law is so which one will say show this positive deviation so it will be a and b so two are the correct answer here a and b carbon tetrachloride and methanol benzene and toluene so why is it so so when the intermolecular interaction between is uh, between the two components a and b in the mixture is same as between a, a and b b it is case of an ideal case so we know that very clearly now when the intermolecular interaction between a and b of a mixture that is a and b is smaller than a or b b the mixture is more vaporized and the boiling point is lower so it, it is a case of positive deviation from rolls law now next and when the intermolecular force is higher than the between a and a and b and b the mixture is less vaporized and the boiling process point is increased so it is a case of negative deviation now we have this answer which is A and B is the correct answer. Why A and B is the correct answer? So we have to see the positive deviation. 
सो कार्बन टेट्रा क्लोराइड एंड मिथेनॉल देर पोलैरिटी आर नॉट यू कैन से आर नॉट सेम सो दिस इज मोर एंड मोर पोलर एज कम्पेयर टू कार्बन टेट्रा क्लोराइड विच इज ऑलमोस्ट नॉन पोलर यू कैन से इट इज नॉन पोलर बिकॉज ऑल ऑफ दिस सी एस द डायपल मोमेंट गेट कैंसल एंड वी डू नॉट सी एनी पोलराइजेशन वेयर एज दिसनॉल हैविंग पोलराइजेशन so this interaction will be less uh, stronger and this av will easily leave this solution and we will get a positive deviation from this thing and now next similarly for av which is carbon disulfide which is c2s and acetone is the same case and the same reason while as this two are this benzene and toluene are almost having same so these are an example of ideal solution similarly for phenol and aniline they are almost having the same thing now next benzene and naphthalene form an ideal solution at room temperature so so we have seen the uh, what are the aspects of ideal solution so which of this statement is correct so first one this one is correct okay and since this uh, it is a ideal solution this gelless system will be positive so delta h is positive uh, this is uh, positive And will be T delta S. So we know this equation very well. Delta H is equal to T minus T delta S. Delta H minus delta T delta S. Now it is positive. So we can see this thing here. So this we know very well for the ideal mixing that the volume change should be zero. Now delta G is equal to delta H minus T delta S. Now delta H is zero. So delta G will be negative. And is less than zero. Similarly, we know the uh, this thing very well that this delta system is positive, and that is more than zero. So this is the solution. Now this is the question. You can stop the uh, video and see this question. You have to solve it by yourself. I'm not putting the solution for this. Okay. okay so thank you for today's class so i'm ending this class live session here thank you